Hello, Twin Stick Shooter fans. I'm King Link, and this is a quick look and review of Nex Machina. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. So why a quick look? Well, the fact is I looked at this game as I played it, I played a bunch of hours in it, and I enjoyed it. However, I realized I don't have that much to say. The graphics are good, you can see them of course, and the gameplay is mostly solid, but the fact is, nothing really stood out to me as something that needed to be a deep dive into it. And I just didn't know how much I could write about this game. That doesn't make Nex Machina bad. I'm going to give it a final score, of course, and you can look at that. But it does make it a fantastic candidate for the quick look. So here I am. So let's get started. Of course, like I said, the graphics here are rather good. You have the player character, the enemies, and there's a good amount of variety in the enemies, of course. There's five different worlds, and each has their own selection of enemies and scenery as well as a few tricks to how the level's laid out. And then there's of course the secret world. Wink wink, nudge nudge, but I didn't get to that sad face. There's also the friendly humans that are taken from the studio's PS4 launch title, Resogun, where you can save them and earn multipliers to your score. So graphically here, everything is pretty good. However, I do find that graphically I feel overwhelmed. And I think about half of my deaths are because of that feeling. It's not a flaw in the game, but rather just something to watch out for. I had trouble tracking some of the bullets, and I would walk into one quite often. So, from there, you can listen to music as well, and there's a good soundtrack here. Nothing stood out especially great, but it's also nothing that bothered me with the sound. I'm not a huge soundtrack person, so I don't usually judge them, but this one is good. So, really, the core of this game, though, is a twin-stick shooter. You have movement and shooting on each of your sticks, or on Steam controller you have the pads. You can dash and get a special weapon, which recharges over time, but beyond that, you're mostly just fighting waves of enemy over and over. One thing that makes this game a little bit different is after a set pattern of enemies on a level, you move to a new location in the world and begin tackling enemies there, eventually moving through about 15 levels per world to, and then ending with a boss fight at the end of the level. There's also some special uh, secret levels that you can find as well. This is actually a rather interesting system and I like it. It keeps the game feeling fresh and you can memorize the enemy attack patterns based on the levels you're at, so you don't have to worry too much about keeping track of the um, enemies themselves. The downside is I just feel that some levels are not as good as others, and a couple offer a bit of a cheap death. There's a lot of secrets hidden in the levels and I like that, but there's a couple levels that are a bit frustrating for me. And, you know, a number of those secrets are collectibles. You will see some humans that are the classic collectible from Resogun, and some of them are hidden. And really what they do is add to your multiplier. You don't have a big purpose here other than the score. But there's other pieces here that don't feel necessary. There are bonuses for killing all the enemies in a pre-planned path called Visitors, as well as Disruptor enemies that run and hide, and Secret Beacons. Each of these does add to your score and I believe your multiplier, but they're not interesting to me. Score isn't that important to me, and I know people will brag about their scoreboard and that is the point of the twin stick shooter, but for me, these secrets aren't interesting to collect. And even just finding the three disruptors per world wasn't that interesting as well. There's four difficulties here as well, and they're a bit interesting. There's casual, which is easy, which has unlimited continues. Experience, which is normal difficulty, with 99 continues. You also have uh, Veteran, which is hard mode, with 10 continues. And finally Mastery, that's the same as the Veteran, that has to be unlocked, but the enemies shoot a revenge pro projectile on death. That's the only difference there. So, with those four, the thing is it sounds like a good challenge uh, scale, though the jump from 99 continues to 10 continues sounds pretty bad. But in addition, the game gets remarkably harder as you go up these levels. Casual doesn't move too fast. Experience becomes intense and there's more enemies and they move faster. Veteran, even more so. Mastery is the same as Veteran, but the fact is, each of these is a big step for you to go through. Now, House Marquez, um fans of these games will probably do pretty well here and can go to expert, eh, experienced pretty quickly. But for everyone else, the good news is that casual is a perfect for setting for learning the game and seed most of the game for anyone who finds this game too hard to tackle. And that's good because the challenge is very real here. 
The downside is there's not a good way to move from casual to experience without constantly trying it and dying and just learning the system of the game. Now there's also additional modes in the game, including a good arcade mode that allows you to earn tokens for customization of your character. That's the only place to earn these tokens, and they allow you to go to head to head against other players to show who has the best mastery of next Machina. I actually hit the top 75% of players on a couple of challenges and even the top 50% of players on one challenge. It's a good diversion, but it's just replaying a single world, world with a few settings, so there's not much there. In addition, the customization you can earn is really hard to earn enough tokens, and you actually have to spend some of those tokens to open up other levels, so it's a bit frustrating. Now, each world has a boss, like I mentioned, and they're really solid. Though, after the first world, they feel significantly harder. The first world is a little bit easy, and that's a good thing, but most of them feel like they have a bit too much life, and the majority of this game is about not dying rather than dealing damage. So if you're focused on that, you can get some good hits on them, but it, a lot of them will last a little bit too long. The game also makes it so that once you reach a boss, the game won't reset the level to scratch like it normally does until you run out of lives and have to continue. That's a nice helping hand as well. And really, that's most of Next Machina in my mind. There's certain special weapons that I can discuss. Again, laser is my favorite. There's a few others like the detonator and the smart bomb, but it's not that deep of a game. The thing is, Next Machina is missing some special sauce. And it's an odd thing for me to say because this is the same company that made Super Stardust and Resogun. Both are some of my favorite PlayStation games and just excellent uh, twin stick shooters. Something about Next Machina is missing that same pull that I went crazy for with those other games. I don't know what it is, but I'm not as thrilled with this game. Yet, I'm still recommending it. But it's not as amazing as its contemporaries and predecessors. I like Next Machina, but ultimately I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, I don't know what's missing from this game, but it just doesn't feel as addictive as it could be. And I find myself playing a few rounds of it and wanting to move on to something else. Definitely pick it up if you like twin stick shooters, and definitely if you like House Marquis other games, but overall, if I missed out on it, I probably could have lived. So I'm King Link, I'm on a mini vacation, so we're doing two quick looks. I'll be back in about two days for my second. That's going to be a little different, it's a little more like work for me, and I'm a programmer. I'm going to be talking about TIS 100. Spoiler, it's actually one of my favorite games, and one of my favorite developers, Zachtronics. Until then, I'm out.